Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm sat in the Mercedes-Benz EQXX. It is a record-breaking electric vehicle. No other EV powered by a battery has gone further on a single charge. This thing has driven from Stuttgart in Germany all the way to Silverstone Racing Circuit in the United Kingdom. It clocked up 1,202 kilometers and its average energy consumption was just 8.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers traveled. That is nuts. However, it could have done better. You see, Mercedes made the mistake of handing it over to their Formula E racing driver when it got to Silverstone and he took it on the circuit for some hot laps, which kind of ruined its efficiency ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do here today is put the record straight. I'm gonna drive this car around a special circuit on Mercedes test facility in Germany. I'm gonna see what efficiency I can get out of this car. But what I also want to do is compare its efficiency to a normal road going Mercedes electric car. So follow me will be an EQE, admittedly an AMG 53 version, but that doesn't matter. And we're going to see how efficient that car is when driving at the same speed as this thing round the circuit. But you know what? Electric cars aren't just about efficiency, they're also about performance. So of course, we're going to launch this to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. I'm also going to see just what doing that does to the efficiency. So we'll measure the worst case scenario energy consumption of this car when you thrash it. And once again, we're going to compare that to when you thrash that EQE. Why? Well, because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. I've been joined by Julian from Mercedes-Benz, who is one of the engineers responsible for this car. So Julian, what you're going to do is reset my trip computer. Yes, we're going to reset it. What we also are going to do is give you the possibility to see exactly how much power you are using while driving. Discharge power or charging power. And you're going to talk me through exactly how to drive this car as efficiently as possible, yeah? Yes. And we'll have the guys behind us in the EQE trying to do the same. I'm in drive. You're in drive, that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> well, that, go me. <laughs> that was really, really good. Now, I would suggest you go to D minus minus because then you can drive pure one pedal drive. Uh, you reckon that's better than coasting? Uh, no, as soon as you need coasting, then you're going to switch to coasting with uh, the pedals. Okay, so start off, because I'm just maneuvering in yeah. the most regen as possible. The most regen. Which is one pedal drive, so I don't need to touch the brake unless it's an emergency. Yes. Let's go. You turn left here. Keep in mind that uh, you have to drive on the right-hand side because you are in Europe. Yeah, you noticed that, didn't you? Straight away, I wanted to go on the left. <laughs> yes, you wanted to on go. The, on the correct side of the road. Yes, which here is the right-hand side. <laughs> uh, okay. Now you could switch to D plus so that you do not recuperate. Um, okay, so I'll pull on this paddle, go to D plus. Yes. And now when I lift off, it will just coast, yeah? Yeah, you can just let it coast just to see how the feeling is. So this is just rolling. Yeah, you see how well the car rolls? Yeah, this is like not even slowing down. Yeah, this is something uh, really, really special with the car that it... It seems to be getting quicker. It does actually, it rolls so good because the drag is so low with the car. It's been specifically engineered to have really low drag. One of the key things about the EQXX is its design is all about being as aerodynamic as possible. As you can see, it's got a really long tail, but you can extend it with this spoiler that sticks out. Now, this doesn't create downforce, it just reduces drag, helps improve the aero. In fact, the aero of this car is really, really impressive. It has a drag coefficient of 0.17 CD. Now, you can bear that with the EQS, which has the lowest drag coefficient of any road car, that's 0.2 CD. And look at the shape of it as well. The rear track is actually 50 millimeters narrower than the front because that helps keep these wheels inboard and as you'll notice they're blanked off so the spokes aren't exposed to reduce the drag. 20 inch alloy wheels, they're made out of magnesium so they're lightweight. Also the brake discs are made out of aluminium to help reduce the weight as well. If you check out the design it's very sleek and if you look there's actually solar panels on the roof. They can produce just over one kilowatt hour of electricity to power your ancillaries and that means you get an extra range of about 25 kilometers. Got to show you something quite funny about this car. So it's a four door and it has a rear interior but you can't get to it. If I open this door I always have a problem with Mercedes handles. Don't really like them. <laughs> Look, this door does not open. The car was originally built as a two door. Then the designers got involved and said, do you know what? It needs to be a four door design because it's more fitting with our road cars. And indeed it should be, but it was too late to change the actual structure of the car by the time they got around to that. Reason being, this car has been developed so quickly from initial project sign off, 
to it hitting the road and doing its world record run it took just 22 months which is insane in the world of cars one thing i like about it is this they haven't used cameras for door mirrors like some other companies have for improved aero it's just a smaller sleeker mirror obviously you've got breathers around the front wheels to reduce drag then here at the front you have a couple of breathers there as well and these are the vents here to help cool the motors there's no vents to cool the batteries reason being that they've using the technique there's aluminium plates underneath the car which conduct the heat away from the batch pack and then air rushes over those aluminium plates and then cools the batch pack down really really clever quite a nice design with this rose gold effect here and then you've got little mercedes stars where a grill would be and then the mercedes badge here which isn't one of those pop-up star badges because they would produce a little bit of drag though i thought this would be painted on like on the amg one but it's just a sticker and so are these just stickers which is a little bit cheap feeling really and I'm sure that creates just a little bit of drag. I want to sort of pick it off, but probably shouldn't. OK, so I just follow this round, yeah? Yeah, and then you turn right and uh, you want to... Uh... Oh, that's interesting over there. So normally with electric cars, they can be quite bumpy in the suspension. That went over a little bump there. It wasn't too bad at all. It's a bit softer than I thought it would be. This guy, he knows us. He's going to open the barrier for you. We've got access all areas, yeah? This is your secret test facility. Are we going to see some prototypes? We are going to see some prototypes as well. Uh, don't talk about them. Okay. <laughs> don't look or don't tell anyone if you see some prototypes, guys. All right. Yeah. Who's this lady? Why she uh, joined this us? This is the lady who's watching us. She is also going to talk to us when you are exceeding the speed limit. Okay. It's all about safety. So because we're on this test facility, you're monitored the whole time. The whole time, yeah. And there's also a guy, like a physical human guy, who's monitoring uh, everything as well. And uh, if you exceed the speed limit too often, then he's going to talk to you and he's going to talk to you in my name because you're driving here on my car. So I can mess around all I want and you'll get in trouble. Yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> on my ticket. Today. Okay, so I'm going to coast down here, right? There's no point. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, when you lift off, it just picks it up just speed. Yeah. I don't know why I'm sounding so shocked, because, yeah, you think a car's going to go yeah. quicker as you're going downhill now if you, you lift off. Now you would start to recuperate, because over there you have to turn left. I'm doing it too fast. That's good. Now you're trying to control it with your pedal. You're going to get the fuel for it. You'll see. Does no, that, you turn left. Oh, sorry, crap. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, left. I should have. Now, I don't want to crash this, because it's quite expensive. That would be a problem, but it is also unique. We only have one of those. I definitely don't want to crash it. So now this is a twisty section, so you get a feel for the steering. And obviously, you can tell this car just stays completely flat, really, in the bend. So it wasn't going particularly quickly, to be fair, mm. but it feels pretty level. Obviously, you've got the batteries as low down as possible, which gives you a low center of gravity. OK, which way do you want me to go this way? You leave the roundabout over there at the... 50s. Do you know what we do in the UK that you guys in Germany don't do? We indicate when we're going round mm -hmm. and then we indicate when we're getting off. You only do one of those. We only indicate when we're going off. Yeah. Because uh, we drive our roundabouts only in one direction. We well, so do we. <laughs> yes. Now you turn. Are you taking the piss? But it's obvious that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's obvious that uh, the direction you're going to take in the roundabout, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. So now we're going upwards here. Um, there you are allowed to drive 100. 100 kilometers an hour, okay. Yes, so I'm going to build it up steadily though, because we're going uphill. We don't want to. Yes, you build up with around 30 kilowatts, which is good then. Okay, yeah, so I want to keep this between... kilowatt usage in between what parameters? I, I would say in between 20 and 35 is good uh, with what we have here. So overall, would the slower is better so if i would go at walking pace i would go further so when you did your run mm. if you'd have done it all at 10 kilometers an hour it would have taken longer but you'd have gone further yeah way further but this 20 to 30 is like optimal for performance and energy consumption is that yes. what you're saying okay yeah. so how are you finding my regen am i a little bit too the speed of the car is not smooth enough now you go to d plus please okay let it roll down roll in it's picking then up speed. it's going to pick up speed. Yep. You catch the speed when you go upwards. So uh, pick it up when we start to drop yeah. off a bit. Yeah. Now you can add some in. Yes. Now you can pick it up. It's good. You can accelerate a bit more because speed limit over here is 70 roundabout. And now you see the road is going to get down again, and then uh, so I'm gonna lift off. Lift off and let it coast. Yes. And then you'll see it picks up speed. How does it feel for you compared to other cars? It's the lifting off. Yeah. And obviously, I've been in other electric cars when they have a coast mode. They don't feel like this. This feels almost like a marble going down a hill, the way it picks up speed. Yeah. You can tell there's very little friction. So there's a lot of planning, isn't there, with this? Now you're going to lift off and coast and work your regen mm. in the right way to maximize your efficiency. So now I'm going to pick it up again. It's quite good fun. 
isn't yeah. it, doing this? Yeah. Probably not fun for the people behind you if you're going too slowly. So here it goes down. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. But then you see the corner over there. Yep. So you don't want to pick up too much speed because the corner, yeah, 70-ish is a good spot. I'll bring in a corner. little bit of regen here. That's it, yeah. So 70 into this corner. It'll, yeah. So just and cruise at 70. And cruise at 70. Okay, let's see how it does go into this. Now you can cruise through the corner. This is efficient driving. If you want to narrow it down to a point, then drive as constant as you can. And do not change the speed too much. And you can drive constant the best when you look very far down the road. In some ways, it's a little bit like motorsport racing driving, when you're looking as far ahead as possible to pick your lines, yeah. but you're doing it to be as efficient as possible rather True. than as fast as possible. The EQXX has a very special battery and this is it. It's been built with the help of Mercedes Formula One team and it's really, really compact. You see, this has 100 kilowatt hours of capacity, which is about the same as the Mercedes EQS. However, the volume of this battery is about half the size of the EQS's. It's also 30% lighter, so it weighs in at 495 kilos as opposed to 650 kilos. It's also very efficient, so a normal electric car would use about 90% of its battery capacity for propulsion. The remaining 10% is used for ancillary stuff such as your sat nav and your air conditioning. However, everything about the EQXX is so efficient that 95% of the battery's power can be used for propulsion, only 5% for those other bits and pieces. And the power itself goes to a single rear-mounted motor which puts out two 244 horsepower. It's good for a top speed of 87 miles an hour, which is 140 kilometers an hour. As for the acceleration, well, I'm going to do a launch with the car in a bit, so we'll find out exactly how quick it is, because Mercedes hasn't officially said. I wonder if I'm doing well enough to beat that 8.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that you guys got on your journey. I'm not sure. You are an good path to do so. Oh, wicked. You, I think if you continue like this and we'll improve a bit more, then uh, you'll do it, I'm sure. I'll tell you what's interesting. I've driven a lot of concept cars and they're usually really rattly and comfortable. This is quiet. Mm -hmm. It's relaxing. It's quite finished, isn't it, for yeah, a concept? Yeah, it is, it is. And uh, from an engineering point of view and also the workshop uh, guys, we're all really, really proud of the car. And uh, we also work together with uh, colleagues from the UK, from our Formula One department, and they brought some motorsport spirit into the project. Normally electric cars are really big and heavy because of their huge batteries. Despite the fact the EQXX has a huge battery, it weighs 1,750 kilos, which is fairly light for an electric car with such an impressive range. Now, one of the ways that Mercedes has kept the weight down is to use some really clever technology in building the supporting structures for the car. So this is the rear subframe, and rather than being made up of 70 different pieces of metal like it would normally be for the amount of strength required for the car, they've actually used an organic structure. And the shape of this has been worked out by a computer game engine, and then what they've done is use that to 3D print a cast from which they formed this metal structure. And I'll tell you what, if that was made by old fashioned methods, I would not have been able to lift it like that. Here's another example of similar technology. Once again, the computer game engine has worked out the strength required for making this mount, which is for the windscreen wiper motor. And they've only used bits of metal that they need for the strength. And they've actually 3D printed this out of metal. This weighs 200 grams. Normally, it would weigh two kilos. It's a tenth of the weight it would otherwise be. Now, it's the same thing here with the front suspension mount. This has been cast from a 3D printed mold. As a result, it's small, efficient, and light. Once again, you can see the organic structure here. By comparison, this is the front suspension mount for a Mercedes S-Class, which is made using normal production methods, so just solid metal. As a result, it's quite heavy and big. Now, you can actually see all these structures here on this model version, of the EQXX. So there's the suspension mount, there's the mount for the windscreen wiper motor, and there's the rear subframe. Yes, it's nice and light and so too is the EQXX, where you consider it can do over 1,000 kilometers. Or maybe more, we'll find out in a moment. There's one thing you forgot to do. You haven't done any donuts in it. It's rear wheel drive. I saw the skid pan there. Should we just nip back and go do some donuts? No, no, no donuts today. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not the AMG version, is it? Uh, this one, not. Does it feel like it? Whoa, there's a tractor. 
Oh, I don't want to break. This is the problem. This is the problem. Yes, yes this, exactly. This is the, especially when you're driving something <laughs> that's as expensive as this, you know, like millions and millions and millions of euros and the bloody tractor pulls out. And I don't know whether yes. I want to stop or not. I didn't stop. Oh, that could have been really bad. 70 again. Oh, will it hold on? We've got low friction tires and they're pumped up quite a lot, but it, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, isn't it? It feels good. We're not it's really good. pushing it that hard though. Come on. No, not yeah. You are not going to do so. <laughs> I, like, I like the quick backtracking. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's a straight. Let's see if we can get you in trouble. Uh, here's 100 speed limit. Do you know what I've done on this straight? I've actually launched a load of classic Mercedes, okay. some of them which were worth millions. Now, if you so want to watch that video, just click on... Can, oh, sorry. You can do, let the car do the job. No, that's okay. Just... Uh, long long press on the right yep. one. Now you see the auto. Okay. And now just let the car roll. And you'll do its and thing. It should do the recuperation for you because there's a roundabout about to come. So it's going to so it's going to figure out where to break and recuperate. Okay. But do oh, you know what you did though, Julian? You accidentally interrupted a very important plug to another one of our videos, which is another Mercedes video. Oh, sorry. So you've got to point up there like that and tell people to click there. Just point and go click here. Click, click here, please. There we go. Now click you there. see the car is <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just the yeah. car is now slight. You can put your hand down now. <laughs> the car. Look at this. Is brilliant. Yeah. So ah, is it going to? Is it just really? Trust me. Trust me. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> oh, that's I, really I did strange. The it's <laughs> okay. Yeah, which you, way? You're going to leave the roundabout here. So now I take control. Yeah, now you can take control. Yeah. So that was really weird. It it just slowed the car down the right amount to get me around that corner. Yeah. And it was really, really efficient. I would say a bit more efficient than you could have done in that particular case. So in few because you couldn't see this no. round corner because it was uh, downward somewhere. You didn't see it. And now it's recuperating you to keep the speed. You see. Oh, this is good. It's this assisting is assisting you. Yeah. It's speeding. You program the car to speed. It's 50. It's doing like 54. Yeah. And now it. You, so I can go around here without yeah, without braking. Here. Without yes. braking. Yes. Uh, you see, we built up some trust, Austin. Yeah, it's good. I, I trust you now. It's good. Important. <laughs> Here we turn left then. Right, you uh, mean. But that, right? It doesn't know. Uh, right, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, now we have to break. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now so we you can leave the, the auto mode because it does not okay. know if it uh, knows where we want to go. So, Julian, you, you managed to engineer a car that can do over a thousand kilometers on one charge, but you don't know the difference between left and right. <laughs> I think you need to go back to school. Yeah, I could do so, but not engineering school. No. <laughs> not going to lie to you, Julian, the mm. brake pedal feels a bit weird. Does it? A little bit. Mm. I don't use it. I can tell. <laughs> I think on your road going electric cars, it's a little bit better calibrated. Just saying, don't take offence. No offence taken. It was clearly not the focus with this project. <laughs> Here we turn left, sorry. So that's left, left? Left, left, yes. Not right, left? Yeah, yeah, okay. we agreed right now, okay. uh, left and right. I'll stop with that gag. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's pretty bored of it, <laughs> especially you. I'm going to stop with recuperation. Don't do it too much. So I'm using the pedals now to just yeah. slow it exactly as I want it. Come on, stop, 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 stop. I did it. Okay. Yeah, okay, now you can break. Now you can break because now we're rolling backwards. <laughs> I'm really interested to see exactly how efficient I was and yes. find out exactly how I did, how I compared to when you guys did it on the road yeah. and how this car compared to that AMG. And then after we've done that, we're going to launch them. Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we've got the details of all my driving data here and we can see that I drove for 15.74 kilometers, an average speed of 45 kilometers an hour, and my average consumption was 8.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And when you do the maths based on the battery capacity, I would have driven on a full charge a total of 1,220 kilometers. So further than you did out on the road. Yes. yes. That's enough. Anyway. <laughs> If you look here at my driver profile, we actually have a pro driver, so Julian, yeah, what he did when he drove the test course. And you can see my profile. Mine's the blue profile, and this is my energy consumption there. So I'm doing better in this stage than Julian did, 
So he averaged 7.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and he was going slightly faster as well, so a bit better. But I blame the slight shortfall on the fact that tractor pulled out on me, otherwise I'd have beaten him. Don't you reckon? Yeah, it might have been closer without the tractor driving in there, that's true. But totally the tractor. Still, you would have been slower. It's the tractor. You sure? Absolutely. Shall, shall we launch the cars? <laughs> Let's launch the cars. Oh, before Let's we do cars, yeah. before we do though, the AMG yes. EQE, so that averaged 19.9. .9 on the same route. <laughs> on the same yeah. route, which is quite a bit more. And when you work out its battery capacity of 90.6 kilowatt hours, that means that would have done 455 yes. kilometers on a single charge. So going more than twice as far. Anyway, now let's launch them. Okay, now we're going to launch the Mercedes-Benz EQXX to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Unfortunately, I can't drive it because I'm not insured on this segment of the test track, so we're going to get Julian to do it, so it's all on you. And what we're going to do is measure the time, but also we're going to measure the energy consumption as well. All right, I'll count you in. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a bit slower than I thought it would be off the line. So 0 to 60 is coming up. Now, 7.51, what is the quarter mile though? Keep pushing, keep pushing, come on. So the power drops off at the top end, but we've got a quarter mile time of 15.87 seconds. So hard break, because we don't want to do too much regen. And what was that energy consumption? 38.6. Ooh, 38.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yes. I'm much more efficient than you, you're rubbish. Yes, well, uh, it was a different driving profile, I would no, say. No, no, I won't. I, I totally won't. <laughs> so, what I found interesting was that it was quite slow feeling off the mark, but the time we put in for 0 to 60 was respectable, 7.5. But if you just floor it now, go on, hit, hit the accelerator fully. Yeah, the pickup yeah. is better, isn't it, once you're rolling? So, when you need to overtake a car, it's, it's yeah. faster than that number of 7.5. Yeah. Suggest so for overtaking, it's like the, the low end torque is not that high of the car because it's engineered for highway speeds. The power of the car with 180 kilowatts is quite high, but you only get that power from above a certain speed. So if I uh, do full throttle right now at 30 kph. Well, uh, right, let's just test it with my special G measuring device here. Go on then, so floor it. Yeah, it's better, isn't it? Yeah, that way I get faster. It's getting even better. Yes. Look at this, this is science. Yeah. Do you use one of these in your testing while developing the car? Yeah, always, but they are calibrated a bit more thoroughly. <laughs> Engineer jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what, Julian? That time you just got over the standing quarter mile was pretty much the same that I got from an R32 Nissan Skyline GTR, and that obviously is known as a fast car. So it's not too bad, really. Anyhow, we've now jumped into the AMG EQE. 53 and we're going to launch it see how quick it is from 0 to 60 and also measure the efficiency it's got my specialist timing gear up here when you're ready launch it let's see what we do oh yeah that's more brutal so 0 to 60 is coming up quicker and it's 3.17 seconds what's <laughs> what's the quarter mile it is 11.57 yeah, it's better than the EQXX, isn't it? But what it's about the efficiency? 99.9 .9 kilowatt hours per 100, so I'm <laughs> afraid it went to the maximum uh, that it displays, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, do you think it went higher than 99.9 .9 then? You, I'm absolutely sure. What do you reckon, using your engineering knowledge and expertise? Might be double. I mean, really? We have been way faster than 140, and you have to take into account at those high speeds uh, the drag is way higher because the air drag goes into the calculation in the square of it of the speed you know so the air drag force at 200 is four times the force then you have to go at 100. it's less efficient yes but we have been faster i mean it's less efficient and we have been faster and I mean, obviously you need to put energy in there to get fast. So we did not drive exactly the same trajectory speed wise. So we, it's hard to it's compare It's less efficient. <laughs> there we go. But the acceleration is good. 
like <laughs> floor it along here now as well. Let's see the pickup compared to the EQXX. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Do you know what? It's really quick, isn't it? Considering it's a 53 model and not a 63, it's <laughs> really pretty quick. <laughs> it's awesome. Let's do it. No, again. no, no, don't, 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 Right, ready? Go. Take care of your nose. <laughs> <laughs> go on, see if you can bash me in the face with it. Go on. Yeah. Go on, go, do it. <laughs> do it again. I, I like hurting myself. <laughs> now, if you want to hurt me again, you can, but it's whether you really want to hurt me again. Uh, yeah, once more. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a bit kind of weird. It got a bit S and M there, didn't it, Julian? Let's let's just wrap this up here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of the EQXX in the comments below. Click on those windows there, right, for some more videos, and click on that box there to go to Carwide to see how much you can get for your car. You just upload some photos, give a brief description, then add in as a bid on your car. And on average, 83% of the people get a better price through Carwide. Thanks for watching.